Takes a fight, perfectly just destroys Yuri. Now he knows it's round on. Smoke spade him. There's two people on site. He hears the bomb going down. This is the perfect time for him to fight. So in this first clip, we're gonna get Dong's 4K against Furia and how he uses just elite crosshair placement to always deliver effortless headshots and how he uses angle isolation to always have a favorable fight. We're gonna look at it firstly from his POV and then the other team's POV just to deliver the exact message I'm trying to give and show you guys. So firstly, Donk always just pre-aims and puts his crosshair where he's gonna peek. A lot of the time players will swing corners and then they'll have to flick unnecessarily or readjust and make micro adjustments. Donk rarely has to do that, and that's why his 4Ks and multi-fragging ability is so consistent, because he eliminates a lot of the excess time that players take to readjust their aim and readjust their cross onto the other team. So we're going to look at it now, and we're going to look at just how he isolates angles to always use his knowledge of the game, so enemy team's path in and who goes first, second, and third, to his advantage. So the most common path in positions, A man will always pick first, pass will pick second or third. He knows this. Takes the first fight, eh, man? Readjusts his crosshair to Palace, has a nice angle isolation. The next two players, main cannot trade him. This guy, Palace, just has no chance. Readjusts, just clean 3k and just hunts down K Sakurado. So we're gonna look at it from the other team's POV just to deliver the message of just angle isolation, understanding of pathing, and just how important and impactful it can be. We'll start off with Cello because Fallen gets picked off by Shiro. Cello then swings out to trade the gas stairs. Dong peeks perfectly off Shiro's contact, making this fight almost unwinnable for Cello. Tries to readjust, does a nice spray, but can't, can't control it too much. Now we're gonna look at it from the other team's POV. So the first guy's died Tetris. Second guy peeks Pal, just doesn't have a chance. And then we go to Yuri's POV, who's trying to swing to kill Dong, just gets instantly destroyed. And then K Sakurada's POV. And we're also gonna look at it from the Tetris POV to see whether they could trade the first kill by Dong. So Cello takes the fight into the stairs player. The next two players have no chance to trade because Donk is tucked behind the stairs and Donk chooses now when he's going to fight the T side. As we know in CS2, it is Pika's advantage and whoever chooses when the fight happens usually wins it. Just perfect positioning, perfect crosshair placement and perfect understanding of how the enemy team paths by Donk. So in this next example, we're going to look at a pretty crazy Donk case against Falcons and we're going to look at the same things again, just crosshair placement, angle isolation, and how Donk takes fights to his advantage. We all know about Donk's movement and how insane it is, but I want to focus specifically on his aim and how he makes it look so effortless. So, Donk, the thing about his aim is he doesn't waste time with his crosshair. What I mean by that is he's not dawdling, he's not looking at random things, he always looks where he needs to look, so he eliminates as much unnecessary movement as he can. So watch here, he's pre-aiming door even though it's not needed yet because the most common line and that is the fight he's going to take while he's crossing secret. Sorry, squeaky. Has nice crosshair placement, instantly flicks the magic, pretty insane kill. And his understanding here is really good because when players go aggressive door, it's typically not solo. They'll usually have someone to trade them. So he's pre-aiming through the boxes. He's not messing up his crosshair placement. Instantly swings Madden. He peeks from behind the boxes so he has a favorable fight. So he's peak his peak his advantage. He doesn't just stay and try to trade out. Um, the second player, because if he stays and he's in a position where the C's no, then that's good for the second player on T side. He can just trade Donk, but Donk goes behind the boxes and then re-peaks on his own terms. What Donk does really nicely here is that he instantly repositions down to secret because he knows that Falcons are pretty scared of him at this point. He's 20 and 11. If they want to win this round, they're probably not going to win it hitting Donk directly on A site. So they're going to reposition, try to take map control outside. Donk understands this and repositions to secret and takes some nice aim jewels here. So watch how Donk peaks Silo versus peaks Red. He always just understands where he wants to fight beforehand and he fully commits to it. He doesn't just aim in the middle so he has to flick to one or the other because then he's not really strong anywhere, right? When he peaks Red, he peaks Red. When he peaks Silo, he peaks Silo. It sounds simple, but a lot of players always peak in between or in random positions. So his full commitment and confidence in where he's peaking is such an advantage and he always aligns his crosshair directly to that. That helps with his crosshair placement. Peaks red, gets a nice double. He knows the third player is unknown, most likely Silo because he hasn't seen them outside. And that's just insane. The good thing about Donk's aim and crosshair placement is that he peaks with confidence. He peaks with just 
commitment, which is the most important thing. When he's clearing a line, he's clearing that line. He's not aiming in the middle. He's not flicking around. He's not half assing lines. He's aiming directly where he wants to aim. And if they're somewhere else, it's just unlucky, you know? Maybe then he can flick and have a nice, nice little kill if he gets them. But if not, it is what it is. It's perfect crosshair placement. He's peaking with confidence and he actually fights the lines he wants to fight. He's not fighting everywhere at once, which is super important. So this round by Donk is actually is insane. It's one of the craziest rounds I've ever seen. Um, just based purely off what happens. It's a full eco round with Donk having a hero dig. So I think the thing I like about this round is Donk creates chaos and he disrupts the norm of what's gonna happen in the round. If you play a default eco Glock round, you're probably gonna lose this round. You need to do something crazy and something nuts needs to happen for you to win this round against full, full guns. So Donk understands this. Molly goes down at B, he understands the timing, Magic's going to clear it, and he does something crazy. That kill is nuts, and it actually creates a chance for Spirit to win this round, a round where they shouldn't have any chance at all. Um, and look at all the U-Tool they're using, all the manpower they're bringing over, and just how much chaos he's caused off that one kill. He threads the needle perfectly and kills Snappy there, and this round is on. It's actually insane. If things had gone a bit different, maybe Spirit would have won it. But the fact that Donk even gave Spirit a chance there is insane. I'll show you from Magic's POP just how crazy that round is and how he caught the timing on, or how he got caught by, caught by Donk. Typically when people molly the tunnels and then clear it, they don't think anyone will be there at all for the duration of the molly. Donk actually is pretty insane for that. i just let you guys hear that. Um, and peaks on the off timing after he's cleared and in the middle of the molly and knowing how weak the CT molly is now this play actually becomes a lot more viable and it just Honestly, this is gonna scare Magis for the rest of the game He's gonna be on edge with the mollies and he's not gonna be comfortable at the B site So Donk sacrificing just say if he died there sacrificing one eco round to put the potential fear in a player on the B side or an anchor player is super important and will affect the duration of the game like from the mental state of Magis after that round, it would be rough. I would definitely be worried playing BCP Anchor if that happened to me, and I would not be calm for the rest of the game. So this round is actually insane. This is a 3 vs 4 retake. Soon it will be a 3v4 retake. And we're going to see in this clip how Donk uses positions of the enemy team to his advantage and how he actually registers what he's seen in real time to isolate and just guarantee 1v1 duels and favorable fights for himself. Along with just perfect crosshair placement, head height always, and just good movement and pattern disruption, which is really important here. Typically, if Spirit or any team are going to go for a 3v4 retake, they're going to wait for their A and to rotate, and that means that they're going to lose time, and then they're going to do a set retake with U2, and maybe two people will go out, one person throwing support U2. But the downfall of grouping up here for the CTs is that the Ts then also get time to prepare, set up cross buys, and have a strong post plant position, which in the 3v4 is very hard for the CTs to break. Donk understands this, and he decides to honestly just go insane, use his understanding of where players are currently to give himself a favorable fight or a favorable chance into the round. He just 1v4 retakes here. So he sees one person there at pillar, sees, Skull, sees Charlie there. If he didn't see him there, he's gonna hear him really soon. So he knows there's two players on site. The A lurk is still alive. So typically there's just gonna be three players on this site. So that's actually not too bad. A two versus three versus a three versus four with set post plans and time to solidify is a lot worse for the CTs. So this 2v3 is a lot better. Takes a fight, perfectly just destroys Yuri. Now he knows it's round on. Smoke's fade him. There's two people on site. He hears the bomb going down. This is the perfect time for him to fight. He knows there is just one player with their gun up, which gives him a 1v1, which is just insane at this point. Kills him and Cello has no chance. Like I said, A lurks alive. Donk taps the bomb, perfectly pre-aims E-box and just head height. Okay, Sekirado had no chance there. So the insane thing is that Donk made a three vs four retake, somehow equal into just even or even favorable duels for himself in a 1v4 retake. Just insane. His gameplay, his ability to read the round and understand his way to win the round and just adapt in real time is nuts. And that just is paired perfectly with his insane crosshair placement, his angle isolation, his ability to take and win duels, which feeds into the good um, crosshair placement, always head height, 
always pre-aims what he wants to pre-aim, fully commits to it, doesn't flick around, and he just makes the game look so easy. So that is how Donk aims and how you can incorporate his style into your own gameplay.